Hello, friends. My name is Eric Cloward, and welcome to the Stoic Coffee Break. The Stoic Coffee Break is a weekly podcast where I take an aspect of Stoicism and do my best to break it down to its most important points. I share my experiences, both my successes and my failures, and hope that you can learn something through my experience and to make your life better. This week's episode is called Our Human Contract. Is it ever okay to hate someone as a Stoic? Is there ever a time to have righteous anger? Today I want to talk about anger, hate, and violence in our ever more divisive world. Ignorance leads to fear, fear leads to hate, and hate leads to violence. This is the equation. Ibn Rushd. Today the world feels like it's in chaos. Everything from political violence, war, and ethnic clashes to threats of violence and downright viciousness on social media. Alongside that, the sensationalist news media is always leading with crime and vilification of those with the wrong political opinion. We have politicians excusing and even encouraging violence against one group or another based upon their race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, or social status. And with all of this going on, it can feel at times like there's justification to be angry at some group or another. There's always someone to blame as to why things aren't going the way that you think they should. And it's easy to fall into this trap of declaring that if everyone else just thought and acted the way that you wanted, then everything in the world would be so much better. Now, anger is such an important topic in the Stoic philosophy that it's in the first sentence of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. He says, Of my grandfather Versus, I have learned to be gentle and meek and to refrain from all anger and passion. So why do the Stoics believe that anger and hatred are so paramount that they warn against them so strongly over and over? Because what they call the temporary madness of anger can cause us to do things that we would never do when we're calm and relaxed. When we're angry, we limit our capacity to make better decisions. We'll underestimate risk, and at times even cause harm to ourselves just to cause entry to the target of our anger. But most importantly, the Stoics teach us that The harm that anger can cause doesn't just damage those on the receiving end, it also damages our character. It causes us to be ugly on the inside. We alienate those around us, we push people away from us, cause harm to others, and spend time in a dark and hateful place of our own creation. We make really bad decisions that have lasting consequences, often just by split-second decisions. As Donald Robertson puts it, Anger allows us to do stupid things faster with more energy. I have, at times, when I've lost my temper, said some pretty mean and vicious things to people that I genuinely care about, only because I let that temporary madness take over. I felt hurt about something, and I wanted them to hurt as much as I did, or more. As soon as I calm down, then I truly regret those things that I said, but sadly they're out there and the damage has been done. And when I look back on my marriage, I know that my anger was certainly a contributing factor for my ex-wife asking for a divorce. The more unjust the hatred, the more stubborn it is. Seneca Have you ever met somebody that is angry all the time? How pleasant are they to be around? Do you look forward to spending your time with them, or do you make excuses to limit your time with them? I know that I do my best to limit my time around others who are like this. There are even times when I've been on dates that I've found very attractive, but because of bitterness or anger, I really wasn't interested in pursuing anything further. I would even go so far as to say that hate and anger make a person very ugly on the inside and out. Now, one of the saddest things I can think of in my own life are the bittersweet memories of my father and his violent temper. And it's really sad that there are plenty of great things about him I mean, he was kind and funny and smart and generous. But so many of my memories of him are just overshadowed by his anger and the mental toll that it took on me and my family. I mean, I've spent the last few years working through the trauma caused by his anger, and stoicism has been a big help for me as I've worked through these issues. Whoever does wrong, wrongs himself. Whoever does injustice, does it to himself, making himself evil. Marcus Aurelius A few years ago, I was in a Stoic group on Facebook, 
And I was rather shocked to see a discussion that was going on where a few of the members of the group were using Stoicism to try and justify racism. They were posting things like pictures of people living in huts in Africa as proof that these people were inferior to them. While I tried patiently to discuss this with them and talk about how Stoicism is not compatible with racism, I found it was kind of worthless and gave up on the conversation. And fortunately, they were shortly banned from the group. So, can one be a Stoic and be racist or misogynistic or bigoted? No. And I think there are several reasons for this. First, and one of the most important things, is that Stoicism teaches us that there are things that we can and cannot control. And it's incumbent upon us to determine the difference and to work on the things that we can control and let go of the rest. It's therefore illogical to hate someone for the color of their skin or their sex or gender or any other factor that they can't control. Secondly, anger and hatred are called out as some of the most important passions or negative emotions that we should avoid. And Epictetus makes it very clear that we are to do good and help all humans, not just those that we like or who are on our side. He said, One cannot pursue one's highest good without at the same time necessarily promoting the good of others. A life based on narrow self-interest cannot be esteemed by any honorable measurement. Seeking the very best in ourselves means actively caring for the welfare of other human beings. Our human contract is not with the few people with whom our affairs are most immediately intertwined, nor to the prominent, rich, or well-educated, but to all our human brethren. You cannot continue to hate someone without repeatedly wasting on them some of your precious time and mental energy. Makokoma Makohana So is there ever a time when anger is justified? Again, I would have to say no. Hate and anger diminish your ability to be rational, and the Stoics teach us to use our rational minds over emotions. And the idea that there is justifiable or righteous anger has led to so many atrocities throughout history. Anger is not an easy thing to control. I know that I might think that I'm justified in how I feel about something, but even that justified anger can quickly spiral out of control and I end up saying or doing things that I regret. Mobs that start off feeling justified can spiral out of control and end up doing horrendous things just to satiate that righteous anger. And throughout history, we see that every tyrant, fascist, and dictator has believed in the righteousness of their cause, which has caused immense suffering for so many people. Others, in feeling that they have the right to be angry about something, have started off thinking that their cause was just, but end up taking their rage and anger out on others in ways that completely destroy their own life and the lives of others. So what can we do to better manage our anger? How can we work on getting rid of hate? The Stoics give us many ways to work on anger, but I think the most important is the simplest, and it comes from Epictetus. It is not things that upset us, but our opinion of them. And what it comes down to, really, is just our thinking. If we spend a lot of time thinking about how awful the world is, or that we deserve something, or how much we hate another person or group of people, we are the ones creating these feelings inside of us with our own thoughts. It's our choice to focus on hate and anger, or to direct our thinking and opinion in ways that help improve our lives. When you spend your energy on hating others, You create a prison of unhappiness in your own mind. When you put hate and anger out into the world, you don't just cause damage to the target of your anger, but to your own character, and you bring more of that anger into the world. If you hate a person, then you're defeated by them. Confucius Now, I know that some people feel like they have to prove their strength with anger or violence, but as a simple thought experiment, If you see two people arguing and one of them is getting more and more worked up and yelling while the other one is remaining calm, who do you think has more control of themselves? Who do you think has the stronger will? To me, anger is a sign of weakness, and giving in to anger and hate is easy. Self-control and mental discipline? That's hard. As I mentioned earlier, the Stoics teach us to identify what we can control, and the things that we really can control are our thoughts our will, and our choices. You have control over your thoughts. You can change them at any time. And when you choose to focus on anger and hate, you're blaming someone else or something else for how you feel. You're not taking responsibility for your own thinking and emotions, which is one of the only things that you actually have control over. 
As a simple practice, anytime you're feeling riled up about something, try to take time out before making any decisions. Before you say those awful things, send that angry text, or post that vicious comment to social media, just take a break. Go outside for a walk, read a book, play some music and dance, whatever it is that you need to do to distract yourself and get your mind to calm down. Once you've given yourself some time to cool off, take some time to examine your thoughts that are causing these angry feelings. Then decide if there's a better way to handle the situation. Take the anger out of your text or post. Can you change it to be something purely factual? Is it something that even really needs to be communicated at all? The last and most important thing that you can do is to be careful about what you watch, read, and listen to. There's so much hate-fueled media out there, and the more attention you give it, the more susceptible you are to falling into hate and violence. Extreme political media, conspiracy theories, and anyone that puts out violence and hate are things that bring no value to your life. Anyone that promotes the idea that you should hate one group or another is someone that you really should avoid. There's a lot of anger in the world right now, and it's easy to get swept up in it. Part of being a Stoic is learning how to master your emotions and learn to be dispassionate about things so that you can view them rationally and act in ways that promote the greater good. There's no reason to spend your time and energy on hate. There's so many problems in the world that we need to work on together to make the world a better place. Don't be part of the problem by adding to the hate and violence already out in the world. And that's the end of this week's Stoic Coffee Break. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and thanks for listening.